Good evening. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Fortune Most Powerful Women. Welcome, 2015 mentors and mentees. And welcome, distinguished guests. I'm pleased to have you join us this evening in the Benjamin Franklin Diplomatic Reception Room here at the State Department. And it's wonderful as well to see so many members of Congress joining us here tonight. We are particularly honored to have Secretary Kerry with us this evening. We have a few other special guests. U.S. Treasurer Rosie Rios. Chief of Staff to the First Lady, Tina Chen. Chief Technology Officer of the United States, Megan Smith. <laughs> Assistant Secretary for Western Hemisphere Affairs, Roberta Jacobson. <laughs> and a champion of women all over the world, Ambassador at Large for Global Women's Issues, Kathy Russell. Last but not least, as you look around the room, you'll see there's just a handful of men. One of them is my boss, Under Secretary of State for Public Diplomacy, Rick Stengel. I would like to thank some of the individuals who make the Fortune State Department Global Women's Mentorship Program possible and who have made it possible for 10 years. This program is now a decade old. We could not have made it this far without some very effective partners. First, the American mentors who have taken time out of their busy schedules to share their advice, their talent, and their expertise with their remarkable mentees. Several are here with us tonight, and we just want to say thank you for all of your work. Thank you. Next, Patty Sellers, Lee Gallagher, and Lisa Klukas, who are crucial partners at Fortune Most Powerful Women Network. They're Their leadership helps keep the program strong and resilient year after year. Patty Sellers was instrumental in creating this program 10 years ago, and she continues to be influential in its development every year. Patty, Lee, and Lisa use their knowledge of the business and NGO communities and their personal knowledge of the Fortune Mentors to match mentors with mentees. And of course, at the State Department, we could not do this without the critical partnership of Vital Voices. I want to thank Elise Nelson, Zoe Dean Smith, and Shireen, and the entire Vital Voices team for their ongoing dedication to empowering women around the world. Ten years ago, the State Department launched the Fortune U.S. State Department Global Women's Mentoring Partnership with just 17 mentees nominated by our embassies all over the world. Today, we have more than 250 global alumni who have significantly contributed to their communities and who continue to inspire us. The impact of international exchanges paired with the power of mentoring is a perfect match. This is what we do at the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. We provide the foundation at the State Department for people-to-people -people diplomacy. And elevating the status of women is a foreign policy priority for President Obama and Secretary Kerry. Initiatives like this one empower women who are already leaders around the globe by providing them with the experiences, the tools, and the networks to play even larger roles in their communities. Alumni of this program go home not only to continue building their businesses and strengthening their communities, but also to help women and girls worldwide pursue their ambitions. They inspire the next generation of women leaders. I know that we all look forward to following the business partnerships and personal connections that will grow out of this year's program. With that, I'd like to now turn it over to Patty Sellers, Senior Editor-at-Large at Fortune and Executive Director of Fortune Most Powerful Women. Thank you so much, Evan. Um, we have six Most Powerful Women events a year now, and this is the first. And on this beautiful spring day, we're here to welcome um, all of you, 180 of you, this is a record crowd. Thank you for being here. We have 19 mentees from around the world. 
And as Evan said, we have some of the mentors. Um, we're going to be spending the next three weeks with these amazing young women from countries around the world. And our theme this year for Most Powerful Women is leading with purpose. And we pick these mentors and frankly, we select and invite women to into the Most Powerful Women community with a very clear cr criteria. You can't just be very senior in your job. You have to think about power very broadly. And the mentors are in this game because they see their power as reaching out globally to do good and mentoring the next generation. And so, so many of the women in, the, in this room, including all of you, just epitomize this theme, leading with purpose. So thank you all for being purposeful leaders. Um, we also want to thank our sponsors, Gap International, PwC, Herman Miller, and Goldman Sachs, who is our partner in the Goldman Sachs Fortune Global Women Leaders Award. And now, I'm going to hand it back to Evan, and you'll hear from me later. Thank you. Tonight, we are thrilled to have a man who has the weight of the world on his shoulders join us this evening to show his support for this program and for all of our partners. Throughout his career, whether it has been a soldier in the Vietnam War or as a venerated U.S. Senator, Secretary Kerry has tackled some of our country's most pressing international challenges head on, from climate change to nuclear nonproliferation, humanitarian aid, to leading a global effort to promote and spur entrepreneurship. Secretary Kerry has been an ardent supporter of people-to-people -people exchanges. He understands the power of building connections. And just last month, he said, our responsibility is clear, to invest in women and to level the playing field so women have access to the opportunities and rights that they deserve. Ladies and gentlemen, Secretary of State John Kerry. Uh, thank you very, very much, Evan. Thank you very, very much, Patty. Thanks so much for doing this and for Fortune's commitment to all of this. And thank you, all of you. Good evening. And I apologize profusely. I got you've been sitting here waiting to eat, right? Anyway, I am sorry. Uh, I was held up in the place where Tina works, called the White House, uh, where we were having a long discussion about one of our trouble spots in the world. And I'm uh, really happy to be here. Where this is not a trouble spot. <laughs> um, I want to thank the members of Congress who are here. I guess they're spread around. I don't see them all sitting at one table. I see Nita over here. But uh, uh, Representatives Debbie Dingell, Nita Lowy, who's here, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and Maxine Walters. I want to thank Waters. I want to thank them for their tremendous contribution. Uh, they are powerful women, let me tell you. Especially Nita has got my budget, you know. I'm <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but thank you for the hard work that you do every single day. Honestly, we really appreciate it. And thank you to the Treasurer of the United States, Rosie Rios. Uh, uh, I mentioned to her, she's got her name on every dollar, you know, around the country. She said, I'm watching that money really carefully. Uh, and Tina Chen, what a great job you do. Thank you. You're a delight to work with, and we really appreciate uh, everything that you and the First Lady are accomplishing. Thank you very much. We're excited to have all of you with us on this uh, extraordinary floor of the State Department. This is, I think you know, the Ben Franklin Room. Uh, it's a special room uh, that's Ben over there above the fireplace. And uh, the other Ben, my dog, who is the diplomat, <laughs> is downstairs waiting for me to take him home so he can eat, too. <laughs> so I've held everybody up tonight. Uh, He's not talking to me. Um, the most powerful women. You know, we're in the Ben Franklin room, as I mentioned. All these rooms are named after men. Uh, they didn't listen to Abigail Adams, who told her husband, if particular attention is not paid to the ladies, we will mount a rebellion. <laughs> well, there's been a number of rebellions since that period of time. One of them is that uh, Ben Franklin 
led a pretty interesting life, and he particularly led an interesting life when he was the ambassador to Paris with Jefferson and John Adams was there a period of time when they were all there together. If you read about him, you would all know that uh, when he said wine is uh, constant proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy, he knew what he was talking about. And you also would understand that he would clearly not get confirmed by the United States Senate today. <laughs> Uh, this is supposed to be a, a, a fun evening, and it is a fun evening. Uh, Evan Ryan uh, is, as you know, our Assistant Secretary of State for Educational and Cultural Affairs, and she has it all, as you see. She's got energy, creativity, uh, eloquence, dynamic, and I'm very, very grateful to have her on our team. She's doing a great job of reaching out to, across all the international boundaries to bring us closer together, and I appreciate enormously what she is doing. And Patty Sellers has been a champion for women for many, many years, uh, a driving force behind Fortune's most powerful women's partnership with the State Department. And so um, I'm happy to celebrate the fact that this partnership is now in its 10th year and frankly, is generating more energy and more excitement than ever. So, Patty, thank you for tremendous leadership. We appreciate it. Uh, now, sadly, there was a time, and it was not so long ago, when U.S. foreign policy was pretty much a male-only club, like a lot of places in our country and in the world until the early 1970s. A woman foreign service officer had to literally choose between keeping her job and getting married because she wasn't allowed to do both. It wasn't until 1997, more than two centuries after our nation's birth that we celebrate here in this building so much, that a woman was finally permitted to take the oath of office as Secretary of State. And today, I'm proud to say the President's National Security Advisor is a woman. Our Ambassador to the United Nations is a woman. My predecessor was a woman, and so was her predecessor. We have one woman out of two positions as Deputy Secretary, a woman, that's 50 percent. And we have four undersecretaries of state out of six who are women. And I believe that is what happens when brains and talent determine who does what instead of bigotry bringing down the ceiling. And literally preventing half the population of a nation from taking part. I will tell you, in the course of my travels, I am thunderstruck all the time. Uh, Kathy Russell knows that she's, she's helping to build on this, the amount of energy in country after country today that is embracing this notion that you cannot survive, you can't make it, you can't build in today's world with half your population on the bench. It's impossible. No team in anything can survive that way. And I think, you know, we've broken through here. There's no question in my mind about that. It's forever. And, and, and the levels of uh, change. We have some things we can still do better. We all know that, and we're working at it constantly. But uh, I'm proud to say that I had, I think, more women serve as my chief of staff in the Senate, uh, my campaign for president, any number of major efforts. Stephanie Cutter is over here. She was my spokesperson in the campaign, and <laughs> countless numbers of people have uh, made the difference. But whether it's in the United States or in any country, and you all know this, I don't obviously
and improve child nutrition and less maternal mortality in the course of childbirth. And you would talk about lower rates of disease, crime, violence, and civil strife. And finally, a stronger sense of community, of belonging, of sharing. So if you wanted to save time, you could just draw a line on a page and write underneath it, empower women. Because every single one of those things sees progress if women are, in fact, empowered and able to address those concerns. They're all part of it. It's why the State Fortune magazine partnership actually is so meaningful. And it's why it is helping to bring about a larger transformation that is so vital to our future. One of my predecessors, Madeleine Albright, said there is a special place in hell reserved for women who don't help other women. But let me just build on that for a minute. The actual, the truth is, we all need to help each other. And a mentoring program in which one generation gives a hand up to the next is a vital way to be able to expand leadership networks. And what we know today is that in today's world, Rick and a group of young, uh, of, uh, young Foreign Service officers articulately brought this to my attention when we met to just talk about the changes in the world that we're living in today. And they commented on how today power is not served up so much in hierarchies as it is served up in networks. Think about that. Everybody connected all the time, 24-7, everywhere. But many of them powerless to be able to do anything about those connections, to be able to move on them. So something like the Fortune Most Powerful Women Network is a critical way to pay homage to that notion of how power is in fact created. And so far, this women's network has helped 250 emerging leaders from more than 50 countries, leaders such as uh, Sarika Bhattacharya, who went through the program in 2012 and is now running a nonprofit mentoring initiative for women entrepreneurs in her home country of India. Or leaders such as one of last year's uh, participants, Florence uh, Ozar, who returned to Nigeria to join a flourishing civil society movement to advocate for voting rights and for the safe return of girls kidnapped by terrorists. As for the emerging women leaders who are gathered here tonight, all I can say is this is an amazingly impressive group. And I'm not sure that emerging is quite the right word. I think you've already emerged and taken off <laughs> from as near as Mexico to as far away as East Asia and Africa. Uh, every single one of you are making a mark in just about every sector, trade, investment, engineering, fashion, finance, travel, human resources, the selling of cars and trucks, and the use of advanced technology to prevent that scourge of the modern world, cattle rustling. That's actually <laughs> happening. Now, I don't have to tell any of you here that uh, in this audience, uh, we got a lot of work still to do to eliminate those barriers completely. I, I can remember when I first started in politics, uh, after I came back from Vietnam, early 1970s, one of the things we threw ourselves into was uh, the Equal Rights Amendment. Uh, and it was pre-Roe v. Wade and pre-other things that had, you know, advanced uh, the interests of women. And we learned uh, then how difficult it was to eliminate the barriers of bigotry and condescension and tokenism, and let's be honest, in some cases, just jealousy that unjustly impeded progress of women. And it took a lot of folks ready to break down those barriers and stand up and take risks, sometimes risks of livelihood, to be able to bring about those changes. We'd have to be pretty dim, though, not to recognize a trend. With us tonight are 19 very good reasons to be optimistic in a world that may at times seem broken 
and hurting, but which is also full, amazingly full of exciting new opportunities and grounds for hope. So my concluding note to you tonight is a very simple and indeed even a personal one. As the father of two daughters, both very independent and out there in the world carving out their own careers, one a doctor, one a filmmaker, uh, as the husband of a, of a wife who is a powerhouse in her own right and defined her own course, I want to say thank you to every advocate every person who is an activist, all of you, and those who are here in spirit tonight. I thank you for not accepting injustice. I thank you for not waiting when people suggested you should. I thank you for not settling for half measures. I thank you for working so hard and for so long with such determination to bring about the day that will surely come the day when we are able to say with confidence to any girl anywhere that she can truly expect to rise as high and go as far as her energy and her skills will take her. Because when that day comes, there's no question in my mind, I've seen it in community after community, women help make peace. Women help resolve conflict. Women usually are picking up the pieces. And if we will simply give more power in places where it should have been put a long time ago, then we are going to make this world reach a place it has dreamed of and needs to. Thank you. God bless. It's time to eat. Thank you. Appreciate it. Enjoy your appetizer. We'll be back. Thank you.